So lots of times we don't have time to make a full recipe of a 24 hour ferment for sourdough. So I'm gonna teach you how you can bulk bake your sourdough bread and you just have to partially bake it. We're gonna partially bake it in the oven and then we're gonna freeze it. So we're gonna cool it down and freeze it and I'll show you exactly how to bring it back out and you can finish baking it in the oven so that you can stockpile your freezer with all these partially baked loaves and then you can always have fresh baked bread because you bring it out, we'll put it back in the oven and we'll finish baking it. So I have this loaf of sourdough that has been proofing for too long. It's a little bit overproofed, but that's all right. So this has been in the fridge um, proofing for like a couple days, which is a bit too long, um, but that's fine. Okay, so we're gonna take our bread mat and put it over top. And this is gonna bake us a beautiful, huge loaf. So it's still holding its shape. To be honest, like I said in my last video, even with overproof dough, it's really difficult to overproof your dough to the point that you have flat sourdough. So this is a very overproof loaf of bread and it's huge, but it was properly fermented and um, our leaven was nice and strong. And so I'm not dealing with flat dough or anything. And these bannetons also really help with that. These are a paper pulp bannetin and they help to uh, keep the kind of shape of the dough. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do one score because once I score this, it's gonna start to spread and I'm gonna put it right in the oven um, at our regular time that we always do. So we're gonna come all the way across our regular score, okay? Pop that bubble there. So it's gonna be a little misshaped on the ends because it is kind of starting to spread a bit. So this is what I use to bake my sourdough in. Um, I have a mix and match. So I have one that has the handle and one that doesn't. And so I actually put it in the oven upside down. So these are combo cookers from Lodge. It's a two point or 10.25 inch. So you can put them on the cover like this. And the reason that I like these is because I can just lift off the cover and plop the loaf right on top of that. And so then when I do my bake, um, so I'm doing my bake, we do it at 450 for about 22 to 23 minutes uh, with the cover on. And then when I'm finished uh, that, if I was gonna keep cooking it, which we're not today, I would take that off and then it would just sit in the middle of this pan like that and do the rest of the bake. So today we're just gonna do the part with the cover on. So we're gonna cover it up. It's gonna bake at 450 for 22 to 23 minutes and uh, then we're going to take it out and I'll show you what we'll do next. This is what it looks like out of the oven. So this did the first half of the bake. So 22 to 23 minutes at 450. Um, it got a little smushed on the end there because it's such a big loaf. Basically, we're gonna, we, take, we took this out of the oven, we're gonna let it cool, and then you can put it in a Ziploc bag and stick it right in your freezer just like this. When you take it out of your freezer, so you can do five, six, 10 loaves like this, put them in the freezer, partially baked. <clears throat> when you bring it out of the freezer, what you need to be really mindful of is not to take it out of this bag. So I just use regular Ziploc bags. You can see all the condensation forming around the outside of this loaf. This is a fully cooked loaf, but it's the same thing applies to the partially baked ones. And basically what happens is all this condensation as the loaf starts to defrost gets absorbed back into the loaf. So it hydrates the loaf again. And you need that because otherwise you're gonna put this back into the oven and there's not gonna be any hydration in there. It's going to get really, um, like really hard crust on the outside and <clears throat> it's gonna be really hard to cut and it's gonna blacken up. We don't want that to happen. And likewise, with ones that are fully baked, when you take them out of the oven and you leave it to, or sorry, out of the freezer and you leave it to sit inside the bag, it absorbs the moisture back in. So then you have a really nice fresh loaf of bread when you've, when you've thawed it out. So regardless if it's fully baked or partially baked, you wanna leave it inside this bag, take it out of the freezer, let it defrost. And then what we're going to do, I'm gonna show you what we do next. So we're gonna put this in the freezer and then bring it out, let it defrost, all of that. And then I will show you how to fully bake your loaf so that you have fresh baked bread that you don't have to do all of the steps for. So this is defrosted and obviously fully cooled and all of that. So we just have to preheat the oven to 500 degrees with our Dutch oven inside and we're going to pull it out, you can see, and we're going to 
place our loaf back into the oven. I'm gonna show you that. So we're just gonna take our loaf like this. You actually don't even need to put it on a bread mat if you don't want to. And then this part's really important. You're gonna take two ice cubes and you're gonna slide them in next to your loaf. Then you're gonna take the cover and we're gonna put it back on. So we're gonna put the cover back on for 10 minutes. So slide that in. We're gonna drop the temperature down to 450. And we're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. This is gonna give it some steam so that your crust isn't super dark and allow it to continue cooking for a little bit. So basically what we're doing here is we've taken our loaf out of the freezer, we've completely thawed it out, and the reason that it's so important to thaw it out inside the bag is you wanna maintain that moisture level and that sort of like condensation when you put it into the oven. Then we add even more steam, so we add our um, ice cubes into the, so you can also spritz it too. So you could spritz the loaf, but I find the ice cubes work better because they give like a more even distribution of the steam. And we're just gonna do that for like 10 minutes. And the reason that we do that is it sort of like heats the inside temperature back up to where it would have been when we first um, baked our loaf, like par baked our loaf in that first half. So we're almost like mimicking the first half again, but only doing half the time. So we're doing 10 minutes, then we're gonna take the cover off, we're gonna drop that temperature down and we're gonna finish out our bake. So that's up to temperature now. Um, and we're gonna leave it like that and give it 10 minutes. And then once we take the cover off, we're gonna do, do about 15 minutes at 425, same as you would always do for a regular loaf. And you'll have like the exact same type of loaf that you would have done if you had baked it fully all the way through the first time. Okay, so this is just about finished. So we're gonna reach in and we are going to take the cover off. So it looks pretty much the same as it did, but it's brought its temperature, its internal temperature back up. Okay, so we're gonna put that back in. We're going to change, sorry, this is a little bit dirty, um, this to 425. And then we're going to set this timer for about 15 minutes. Okay, and that will give us our internal temperature and it will be ready to go. All right, so this is it out of the oven. It has exactly the same type of crust that you're gonna have when you bake it all the way through. It has a nice golden bottom. Um, it doesn't burn on the bottom. That's key for putting the ice cubes, in my experience, inside the Dutch oven and then also letting it defrost fully inside the bag. So those are the tips and tricks to you can bulk bake. So I made a batch that would make five or six loaves and then just par bake them all, put them in the freezer and you can bring them out and inside of a half an hour, you can have fresh baked bread. So this is still really warm, but the inside is 200 degrees. You wanna make sure I use this uh, quick read thermometer and I just stick it in and as soon as it comes out of the oven and as long as it says 200 degrees, then you are good to go. You wanna make sure it fully cools before you, um, before you cut into it though.